Our Breeders' Cup recap series continues, and this will be one of the longer recaps that we have for you as Fall Stars Weekend kicked off the Keeneland meet. What momentum we have heading into the Breeders' Cup right there at Keeneland. We look forward to returning and being back on site with fans this year as well. The picture's a little bit more clear with each of our divisions now that we have some of these races in our rear view. So let's start at Keeneland. Let's start with the sprinters in the sprint division. The Stolkeen and Ogden Phoenix resulted in a price. Manny Waugh and Corey Lannery sneaking through along the inside. That patient ride that we're used to. Take a look at Manny Waugh, an upset winner of the Phoenix. Special Reserve is there with a narrow lead. Top Gunner right there on the outside. Long Range Toddy, then Sibelius, who has to swing way out to the grandstand side in the center of the racetrack. Special Reserve, and now Top Gunner. Top Gunner with a narrow lead. Baytown Bear is going to run late toward the inside. Still five lengths from the front, though. Final furlong, and it is Top Gunner with the lead for Ray Lou Gutierrez. Baytown Bear, now Long Range Toddy diving to the inside. Late charge from Manny Waugh down toward the rail. Coming to the line, Top Gunner a narrow lead, but this will be close, and at the wire, up the rail for the victory. What a stretch run by Manny Waugh. So Manny Waugh punches his ticket to the Qatar Racing Sprint. Corey Lannery aboard. Trainer Wayne Catalano had a win in the Breeders' Cup Sprint not long ago with Aloha West. He looks to do it again, this time for owner Susan Moulton with Manny Waugh. The J.P. Morgan Chase Jessamine for the juvenile fillies on the turf course was one of the more competitive races of the weekend. Quite a few figured in there. He had a huge scratch coming into the day of tax implications. Ended up with a great price at post time on pretty much any of the young fillies that you liked. And in the end, it was a gate to wire front running sensation from Delight. Delight steals it on the front end on the Keeneland turf course. Delight is the leader. Bling is second. CC Cruise Control is in third. Toehead is in fourth. And then Knock Your Socks Off, who's in fifth. Dulce is sixth. Delight the leader. Delight on top by three, by four. Back to Bling in second. Then CC Cruise Control. Knock Your Socks Off. Sabalinka coming late. No catching. Delight. Delight. Much the best for jockey Luis Saez and the J.P. Morgan Chase Jessamine Stakes. Big congratulations to her trainer, Jonathan Thomas, the winning conditioner for Augustin Stables, a long-standing partnership there. Jockey Luis Saez aboard Delight for her victory in the J.P. Morgan Chase Jessamine Stakes. She punches her ticket to the juvenile Phillies turf. The Darley Alcibiades would go a little bit later on on the opening day program there at Keeneland. And we came into this race with some heavy choices, a lot of horses from the well-known barns that you're used to, especially with these young fillies in here. And in the end, it was Wonder Wheel who gets the victory for Mark Cassie, who had a huge day really all across the country and in North America as well. I believe four wins on the day at Woodbine that day. But this was Wonder Wheel holding off a fast-closing chop-chop in the Darley Alcibiades. Wonder Wheel with the lead. Wonder Wheel by three. Raging Sea is fighting for second down to the inside. And then Chop Chop on the outside. Kidra between that pair. They're all bearing down on Wonder Wheel. Chop Chop is coming late from the outside, but the wire's coming. Chop Chop chasing Wonder Wheel. Raging Sea between them. Here's the wire and the Alcibiades. It's a head bobbing photo for the win. Wonder Wheel punches her ticket to the NetJets Juvenile Phillies with that victory, just able to hold on under jockey Tyler Gaffleon, who had a huge opening weekend at Keeneland. Mark Cassie, the winning conditioner for the DJ Stables. To the Saturday program we go, the Claiborne Breeders Futurity. We had the chance to take a look at the Colts and Geldings and their opportunity to punch their ticket to the Juvenile. We had races on the West Coast as well. We'll get to those in just a little while. Todd Pletcher with a pair of runners in here, and it was Forte in the end, able to hold on. Forte striding forward to challenge Loggins into the final furlong, and Forte is up to take the lead. Loggins is fighting on toward the inside, but second. Forte leads at a half length. Loggins is still there toward the inside. Look at these two juveniles going at it. Loggins and Forte. Forte and Loggins, and it is Forte in the Claiborne Breeders' Futurity for Iran Ortiz Jr. What a stretch battle. Big victory for Forte, and he punches his ticket to the FanDuel Juvenile. I read Ortiz Jr. aboard, and a strong ride, as we're used to, making some room for himself as they turn for home. He knew he had some horse underneath him. Forte, a determined effort to get the victory. Todd Pletcher, the winning conditioner for Rapoli Stables and St. Elias Stables. Out here on the West Coast in the same division, we had the Grade 1 American Pharaoh. Bob Baffert with four of the runners in this field, and Cave Rock was the heavy favorite. We expected a lot from him. 
He did not disappoint. Take a look at Cave Rock pulling away from a stellar field in the American Pharaoh. They're coming to the quarter pole behind Cave Rock, who's just been cruising along. Cave Rock turns for home with a two-length lead. National Treasure running a good race on the outside second. He takes up the chase with a furlong left to go. Cave Rock by three. National Treasure, Hejazi and Gandolfini. It's all Bob Baffert in the American Pharaoh, but Cave Rock is at the head of the class. And Cave Rock, ultra impressive, stretching out successfully to win by almost six lengths in the American Pharaoh. Huge opportunity for jockey Juan Hernandez. This is one of the nicest young horses that he has been aboard. A 104 buyer speed figure for Cave Rock. Bob Baffert, the conditioner. And in fact, Bob finishes one, two, three, four with his runners. National Treasure checking in second. And then the others, Familiar Silks of Pegrin, Watson, and Whiteman. They are heading to the FanDuel Juvenile once more with the son of Arrogate, Cave Rock. Another qualifier coming your way for the sprint division was the Vosburg. Again, remember that these races we're used to seeing from Belmont have been run at Aqueduct this year. So the Vosburg run over at Aqueduct for the Qatar Racing Sprint Division. And Elite Power would be your winner. It is Elite Power who has the lead here. Eastern Bay now moving up on the outside into second. It is Elite Power who leads by almost three. Eastern Bay running in second. And Elite Power will continue his winning ways here, taking the grade two Vosburg by four and a half lengths. Judmont, Billmont, Jose Lascano teaming up with Elite Power as he will be headed to the Qatar Racing Sprint. Good luck to them and congratulations on the big victory in the Vosburg. Back to Keeneland once more, this time for the Coolmore Turf Mile, a qualifying event for the FanDuel Mile. Annapolis was the winner of this one. A lot of people focusing in on Ivar. You had plenty of attention for some of the other horses uh, in the group. Chad Brown, well represented as per usual, but it was Todd Pletcher and Annapolis able to get the victory. Casa Creed. Winding up down the center of the course. Here's Annapolis looking for room. Mason still has the lead. Here comes Annapolis. Order of Australia is right there. Costa Creed on the far outside. Atone drops back. Annapolis puts ahead in front. Order of Australia. Ivar is running late. It is Annapolis with the lead. Order of Australia. Ivar is there. It is Annapolis in front. It is Annapolis to win the Coolmore Turf Mile. Make it another one on the Saturday program for Ired Ortiz Jr. as he qualifies yet another horse for the Breeders' Cup, this time for the FanDuel Mile Bass Racing LLC, a homebred for them as Annapolis takes home the Coolmore Turf Mile. Plenty of fillies had their opportunity to qualify for the Breeders' Cup this weekend as well. We'll highlight a few races for both the young fillies and the fillies and mares as well. In the juvenile fillies division, the Chandelier Stakes was run here at Santa Anita on Saturday. Grade 2 event coming into the race. A lot of attention for home cooking. A lot of attention for your heavy favorite, Justique. Off one race that looked so brilliant rallying from off the pace. She would be the heavy favorite at post time, but it was actually a filly that had already been quite accomplished herself, already a grade one winner, and tell me no lies, comes back to do it again. A three wide bid coming from and tell me no lies in the center of the track, and she's up to take the lead with a furlong left to go. Uncontrollable, running a big race, moving into second, then Justique, home cooking a 16th to run, and tell me no lies, two lengths, uncontrollable's coming, and tell me no lies, uncontrollable, and tell me no lies has won the chandelier. Big price in the end on and tell me no lies. She's now a grade one winner and a grade two winner. Ramon Vasquez aboard for Peter Miller. He moved his tack here to the West Coast earlier this year and has definitely proved to be a fruitful move. He's on his way to the Breeders' Cup, the NetJets Juvenile Phillies with and tell me no lies for Peter Miller and Peter Redekop. The Rodeo Drive would be run on the Santa Anita program as well, this time for the Makers Mark Philly and Mayor Turf Division, the unique configuration that we have here at Santa Anita as they're able to come down the hill just a little bit before making that full circle and get that marathon distance in. Going to Vegas, another gate to wire score. She's been successful in this race in the past, and she did it again in the Rodeo Drive. Going to Vegas, fluffy socks. Bellamore in between them, Scarabea, there's an eighth to go, and going to Vegas, digging in, Gamely maintains a two-length lead, Fluffy Sox flattening out, Scarabea on the inside, and Bellamore, late run from Family Way, going to Vegas, all the way. 
Big winner circle picture as we are accustomed to with this one. Abandanza racing, medallion racing, my racehorse, perhaps uh, the filly with more owners than anybody on the grounds here going to Vegas. Qualifies for the Maker's Mark filly and mare turf. And Bertrand Rispoli aboard for trainer Phil Diamato. Back to Keeneland we go this time for the filly and mare sprinters in the TCA. The fastest fillies on the grounds lining up this one for that six furlong journey. And it was the New Mexico bred slammed. What a record she has so far. Stellar competition that she has kept all throughout her career. A solid record when she came to the West Coast. Was able to pick up a victory at Del Mar this summer. And she took her talent to Keeneland and proved best in the TCA. And it is slammed the leader a length and a half. Happy Soul is still second. Joyful Cadence is in third as they rumble off the far turn. Followed by Lil Tootsie out in the center of the racetrack. Sconson is still far back and slammed is at the eighth pole. Slammed has a three and a half length lead now. Now it's out to four. Joyful Cadence tries to run towards second outside of Happy Soul. Slammed is on her way to the Breeders' Cup with a win and you're in in the Thoroughbred Club of America. A most convincing winner. Trainer Todd Fincher was very confident in his horse coming into the day. We heard from him on FanDuel TV. Slammed qualifies for the Philly and Mare Sprint. Florent Giroux riding a beautiful race for her owners. Big partnership that includes the Kings, the Kirbys, the Colemans. Congratulations to everyone involved with the New Mexico bred Slammed. Sunday offered a few more opportunities to qualify for the Breeders' Cup. At Keeneland, the Indian Summer was run for the juvenile sprinters. Steve Asmussen with a nice horse coming in. Had already proven himself at Kentucky Downs when they put the blinkers on last time out. A strong bankroll for this horse as well. And he does it again. Congratulations to Private Creed, your winner of the Indian Summer. Take a look. Here's No Nay Hudson striding forward. Now, Private Creed is behind him. Still three lengths from the front. Gent still hanging in there to this point. No Nay Hudson alongside. Private Creed third, three lengths away. Gent fights on. Here comes Private Creed. No Nay Hudson between horses. No Nay Hudson ahead in front. Private Creed is striding forward from the outside. Mostache is running late. Private Creed in front, though. Private Creed wins it. Joel Rosario aboard Private Creed, who qualifies for the juvenile turf sprint. Steve Asmussen, the winning conditioner. He's made all the right moves with this young horse. Mike McCarty, the winning owner. We'll give the juvenile turf sprinters another opportunity, this time back to Aqueduct with the Futurity. Graham Motion with a fast young horse. Take a look. Here is Nagarok in action. The half mile, 44 and 3 fifth seconds. It's Vacation Dance and Gaslight Dancer. They've been battling it out right from the start. There's racing room now for Nagarok, and here he comes on the outside. So it's three of them across as they come down for the 16th pole. Nagarok, Gaslight Dancer in between. Vacation Dance is down at the rail. They come on for the finish, and it is going to be Nagarok. Manny Franco aboard for Graham Motion. Nagarok punches his ticket to the Juvenile Turf Sprint. Madiket Stables, Little Red Feather Racing, and Bill Strauss all in partnership on this young horse. Another qualifier for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. It was the Castle and Key Bourbon from Keeneland. Grade two event, a very full field as per usual. And a patient ride from Flavian Pratt from off the pace with the son of Oscar performance. Here is, and the winner is. Gigante is fourth. Bapio is fifth. Panama, Deer District right alongside now. These two going at it. Here comes, and the winner is. And the winner is striding forward for the lead. A late rally from our dream ride from fifth. But and the winner is, is to the front. Really good's going to run late. But and the winner is. Indeed has won the Castle and Key Bourbon. The Catman Wayne Catalano heading back to the Breeders' Cup as and the winner is secures himself a spot in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. Son of Oscar performance out of the Scat Daddy Mare. Run like the boss. He is now two for three lifetime and also two for two on the turf course at Keeneland. Having broken his maiden here back in April of this year by two lengths. Comes back with a big victory for his owner breeder Susan Moulton with Flavian Pratt in the saddle. The grade one at Judmont Spinster. We Todd Pletcher with a strong hand in the distaff this year. Nest was brilliant on the afternoon in New York as well. As they hit the main track for the mile and an eighth, here's Malathat coming home for the victory. Malathat coming after Latruska. Army Wife tries to join them from the far outside. Malathat, the leader. Malathat takes the lead, has it by two, coming to the eighth pole. Army Wife second. Latruska drops back in third. Played hard is fourth. Malathat, final furlong of the Judmont Spinster, has the advantage. 
advantage out to nearly five lengths, sixteenth to go. Army Wife is second. No catching Malathat. Winning the Judmont Spinster for John Velasquez. Malathat. The four-year-old daughter of Curlin, last year's Kentucky Oaks winner, she in fine form as well, winner of the personal ensign, and now here with the Judmont Spinster, definitely has secured herself a spot more than once this year to make her way to the Breeders' Cup distaff. Shadwell, Stables, Malathot, and Johnny Velasquez for Todd Pletcher in the Spinster. Still to come, a few more international races that we have to look forward to. Would love to see some of these horses make their way overseas to Keeneland to compete in the Breeders' Cup. Last two qualifying events come by way of the Champion Stakes, a qualifying event for the Longines Turf, and the Queen Elizabeth II Stakes for the FanDuel Mile, both to be run at Ascot forthcoming. That's your Breeders' Cup series recap. We hope you've enjoyed it. A lot of action, a lot of horses punching their tickets to that championship weekend in November at Keeneland. And again, the picture is becoming a little bit more clear. Congratulations once more to all the winners.